Are you ready to have some fun? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, we can do better. Who's ready to have some fun? Yeah. All right, awesome. Because today we're going to be talking about how to have fun while doing good. But before I start, I want to ask you a couple more questions. If you can help me out by show of hands. Who thinks we need to stop the destruction of our environment? Who's ready to make the sacrifices to do so? And who thinks that sounds fun? Now, we're not too sure on the last one, are we? But don't worry, you're not alone. We asked hundreds of people the same questions, and it turns out we have a PR problem. In the environmental space, we have a positivity problem. We're just not fun. Sex sells, but is sustainability sexy? I'm here to prove to you that you can have fun while doing good. And that it often takes a positive approach to make positive change. But first, let me introduce myself. Hi, I'm Daniel, and I love to dive. I did my first dive when I was 12 years old. I've been hooked ever since. The feeling of floating underwater, the vibrancy, the color, the life. So I've been diving for many years. Sadly, over time, I noticed a decrease in vibrancy. Where there was color, there's now grayness. Where there were fish, there are now plastic bags. So during one dive where everything looked particularly bad, I decided to dedicate my life to nature conservation so that if I ever have a child, my child gets to enjoy nature the way I did when I grew up. So here I was, motivated, ready to go, ready to make the world a better place. I went to the conferences, I listened to the speakers, I talked to the scientists and I read the papers and I became demotivated. I was a little bored, anxious, overwhelmed, and sometimes I felt judged and a little ashamed. But perhaps that's just me. I want to do one more exercise with you. If we can all close our eyes and we visualize somebody from the environmental space, the first person that comes to mind. All right, open your eyes and explore with me the person that you visualized. Were they welcoming or intimidating? Were they happy or angry? Were they understanding or judging? And did they tell emotional stories that took you away or boring facts that put you asleep? If you're like me, your answers, at least some of them, skewed towards the negative. And that's a big issue. It's an issue for change because of our brain. You see, in our brain, there's a small but very important area called the amygdala. It's responsible for memory formation, decision making, emotional response, fight or flight, for example. And if we're in a positive state, if we're happy, if we feel safe, we're emotionally ready to receive information. The information passes the effective filter in the amygdala, cognition is improved, memory is formed, and we make rational decisions. Now, the opposite is true if we're in a bad mental state, if we're bored, if we're anxious, if we're not engaged. The effective filter is up, so to speak. Information cannot travel as freely, and we showcase lower levels of cognition. Also, if somebody challenges our self-worth, if we're getting offended or being judged, our brain goes into defensive mode. We've all been there, right? Your blood pressure increases. Your heart rate amplifies, your breathing gets quicker. Sometimes you can even feel it in your head. That's your mind and your body going into fight or flight. That's not the time to make the right decision. And lastly, while not directly related to the amygdala, but certainly to the brain, if we receive too much information, we have a cognitive overload. So now ask yourself and be honest here. In the environmental space, can we be boring? Certainly. Do we overload you with information? Too many times, right? And can we be a little judging and shaming? For sure. As a matter of fact, I would argue we're some of the best to stand on a stage, look down on everybody, telling everybody how much they suck, what they need to do to do better, and expect them to smile, walk away, and do as they were told. That's not how change works, because that's not how our brain works. But perhaps there are other areas. Areas that are fun, engaging, entertaining. Areas that we can learn from. Theme parks, for example. 500 million people go to theme parks every year. 
and we have kids that know the whole cinematic universe of Marvel. Every character, every backstory, but they can't name five plants growing in their backyard. Movies. We all love movies, right? There are people that like to dress up like their favorite characters from their favorite TV shows, spending time and money to engage with their tribe. Why don't we have the same positive engagement in environmentalism? So two questions arise. Number one, what can we in the impact space learn from entertainment? Number two, can we turn it around? Can we make entertainment more impactful? Could we create impactainment? That's the question we asked ourselves. And we looked into the seafood sector in particular. It's a sector with massive impact. 30% of greenhouse gas emissions are driven by our food choices. 34% of our fisheries are overfished. Oh man, doesn't this look sexy? <laughs> right? Doesn't this look fun? Don't you want to grab a glass of champagne, go on a date night, and enjoy the evening? So we gave ourselves a challenge. Can we create a seafood experience that's non-judgmental, welcoming to all, that is so fun that people are willing to pay premium for it, where every bite actually helps the ocean, and every menu item is attached to an emotional story, all delivered in an immersive environment to amplify the psychological effects. This is the result. Now we have another amazing speaker coming, so I'm not going to show you the full video, but I want to ask you, does this look fun? Yeah, yeah. Do we have the entertainment covered? Yeah, yeah. All right, then let's look into the impact. We sold out every night and welcomed a broad range of guests. We took thousands of invasive, destructive animals from the ocean and put them on a plate in the most delicious way possible. <laughs> we raised $20,000 for our charity partners. And we created a show that was so engaging that people went afterwards to cleanups where they collected 1,500 pounds of trash. Most importantly, we built a community, an experience where people come together, they laugh together, they cry together. And at the end of the night, we saw people from the political left and the political right join each other, hug each other, and promise to go to a cleanup the next day. If you know anything about the US political system, you know that's a huge achievement. So what's the takeaway? Well, if you're in entertainment, you have to figure it out. You know how to create fun, amazing experiences. I would urge you though, try to inject a little bit of impact. And if you're an impact, if you want to make the world a better place, take a positive approach to positive change. Have some fun with it. Be engaging, be entertaining. If you're a teacher, don't stress your students. If you give a presentation, don't bore your audience, and I hope I wasn't boring today. And if you're an environmentalist, don't shame or judge the people you're trying to reach. They're not gonna change that way because of their brains. Now I'm gonna end today with one ask, one favor from you. Remember the reason why I came into this space in the first place for my future child? Today, I'm the proud dad of a beautiful little girl who loves the ocean just as much as I. That's her right there. Thank you, I love her so much. And I hope that for my daughter and every child out there, we make a promise to go out there, make the world a better place, but have fun doing so. Thank you so much.